So in this video, we'll look at unit 1.2, the elements of life, beginning with this idea of the conservation of energy. And energy, basically the idea of the conservation of energy is that energy is not created or destroyed. It's only transformed or transferred. And these two pictures demonstrate this. The grass on the left is just got is getting energy from the sun. It uses that energy to make more of itself, to reproduce, to do normal life. This gazelle here is uh, getting that energy out of the grass. It uses that energy that it's got out of the grass to make more of itself, to reproduce, to do normal life. And then here, the uh, gazelle meets a grizzly fate as it comes in contact with two cheetahs, not necessarily grizzlies, but they can still do the job quite nicely. And they will take the energy from the gazelle that it got out of the grass, that it got from the sun, and you get the whole idea. And this energy is used to grow, reproduce, just to maintain normal life. And this energy, or, and this is mainly accomplished through the use of energy that is stored up in chemical bonds. And so you see this same sort of exchange here in this picture, whereas the sun is the source of this energy in all living things. And then that energy is just transferred through the chain until it gets to the top. In this particular instance, it is a snake. Now, what happens as this energy is transferred is, and we'll talk more about this in subsequent units, is that that energy, there's this little bit of energy that's lost as you go from one level to the next. And so there's not as much energy available for the snake as there is for the frog, as there is for the grasshopper, as there is for the grass. You kind of get the way that that works. But at each new level, those living systems must gather molecules, whether it be from the air, if you're grass, or from the things that you've eaten to in order to build new molecules for themselves. This energy and energy is needed to then break down those molecules and then build up new molecules. And so we're going to be looking at this idea known as macromolecules, which are these big molecules that exist in living systems. And at the middle of each of these macromolecules is something called carbon. Carbon is an atom that we're all familiar with, very important in living systems, forms what we will call the backbone or the skeleton of most all organic molecules. And you will see these carbon skeletons here in blue, and these are just, just some different organic molecules, and they can form different shapes. You have these branched shapes, you can have these ring type shapes, and we will see all of these as we go throughout the um, as, as we go throughout this unit and then even subsequent units and carbon is has another in um, trait in that it can bind with four other atoms or even four other molecules in some instances where it can just serve as this centerpiece that binds with four other things this gives it a lot of variability a lot of versatility as it can serve as these, again, these skeletons for different organic molecules. Carbon-based molecules are typically used to store energy because of the energy that is bound up in those bonds and also used to create lots of different cellular structures. And so here are some examples of some nucleic acids and some lipids, carbohydrates, proteins, these are the four groups of macromolecules that we're going to be talking about in the upcoming uh, unit, or in this unit, we'll be talking about these macromolecules, the nucleic acids, lipids, carbs, and proteins, and their functions and their structures in a little bit more detail. And here's a picture of a cell membrane and all the different business that's going on on a cell membrane. These are some lipids and some proteins and carbohydrates and all the things, nucleic acid down inside the nucleus. And carbon is at the 
center of each one of these. It forms a skeleton of each of these molecules. And so you can see that from, I mean, we talked about the idea of emergent properties in the last video. You have these really simple molecules, and from that, you can get very complex living systems that are taking care of lots of different business. Well, carbon is not the only atom that is essential for living things. There are a couple others. One of those is nitrogen, and nitrogen is used primarily in living systems to make up proteins. Here's a picture of an amino acid, which represents the building blocks of proteins. And so without, without nitrogen, you wouldn't have amino acids. And also you would not have nucleic acids, which are like DNA and RNA. Nitrogen is at, the, or definitely is necessary for those as well. And so proteins and nucleic acids need nitrogen and then phosphorus is another molecule that is necessary or another atom that is necessary for living things. Phosphorus is found in nucleic acids, just like nitrogen is. Here you see the nitrogen and there's the phosphorus. This is a piece of a nucleic acid called a nucleotide. And down here is a special nucleotide called ATP, which we'll talk about in upcoming units as well. All of these require phosphorus. And here is another molecule that requires phosphorus and this is called a phospholipid and phospholipids make up cell membranes we'll talk more about those later but each one of these little pieces here and you can't really see it in this this little video because it's not very clear but there's thousands of these little pieces that make up this membrane and those are called phospholipids the cells wouldn't exist without them and the same with the again with the nucleic acids necessary or they need phosphorus and also to be formed.